We're live. What's up, everybody? What's up here? Bro, you know what? I just had the realization that dogs don't lay eggs. Oh my God. That's funny. I've been saying that to my kids nonstop. <laughs> Confusing to them. <laughs> they're like, they'll come home from camp. They're like, I learned something today. I was like, I learned something today too. I learned that dogs laid eggs. And they're like, what? Dogs don't lay eggs. Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, but um, I was just looking at my phone at the time and the date. And today is June 21st. Oh. Which means tomorrow. Yeah. The 11th birthday. Tori Prime's 11th birthday. Our, uh, our baby is older than what? Almost one year older than your baby or a few months older than your baby. Yeah, just a few months. That's that's how I know. It's almost the same. Isn't that wild, dude? That's crazy. Yeah. 11 years ago, I remember where I was in my kitchen watching training and you were like, "We should we should start this thing." And I was like, "Huh?" Yeah. I have no idea why you came along with me. Little 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 did we know that Still we would be here that we'd spend a, more than a decade of our lives wow doing that thing, huh? Yeah, and then on the, on the other side, like, Shai was, Fanny was talking about retirement, and then Shai was talking about re retirement, and he's like, Abba, you can retire, you could just give me Satori Prime. And um, <laughs> I, was actually, I was actually sitting and thinking, I was like, I, I don't know that I'll ever stop doing this. Like, yeah. even if we, I mean, I'm sure it'll change a million ways, and how, and what, and, you know, blah, 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 but like, the thought of not doing this or like supporting people or clients or groups or anything like that just seems impossible to me. Like it just yep. gives me so much joy. I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel like working. <laughs> like, no, don't leave us. Yeah. I, I don't plan on it. Yeah. Like we should, legit, do, we, like, should do, uh, we should do like what like really good bands do. We should just be like, all right, we're out of here. Show's over. And then like, and then come back. <laughs> Like encore it, like one six months. One more song. Yeah, exactly. One more song. All right. So if you're just joining us and uh, you're new, you're like, "What the hell are they talking about?" Well, uh, we've been uh, we've been developing this. I mean, really an idea, but you know, more of, of uh, hopefully a movement that we call Satori Prime. Um, and we've been doing this for eleven years. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So it's wild. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's cool to reminisce about that. You know, if you've ever been an entrepreneur uh in your life you know the highs and lows of being an entrepreneur you know that most companies don't make it past their first year certainly very few make it past their first three to five years even less make it past you know the first 10 so it's a uh, definitely means for celebration it's been a really long beautiful ride with lots of twists and turns and scary moments and uh people who've stolen from us situations that have gone terribly wrong and like you know everything in between uh and i think that the reward of of doing this work <laughs> the reward of doing this work is is definitely the people uh it's the lives that we get to touch it's the relationships that we've built and you know i, I don't know how many countries of people we've impacted but you know lots and lots and lots of them and we have like a, a global network family really that's growing all over the world all the time and i think uh you could i, I can't put words in elon's mouth but what i'm proud of the most right now for what's happening with this organization, what's happening inside of this group is that uh, a community has formed out of the nucleus of this idea of people who are supporting each other all over the world. And for those of you guys who are in intentional work, transformational work, evolutionary work, um, well, you know, lots of the stuff. We're not going to get into all the stories about what was stolen and when, you know, tens of thousands of dollars were lost for all sorts of 
criminal activity uh, over the years is just kind of the nature of doing business. Sometimes you meet shady people, um, but that's okay. It's funny how like that happened more earlier in our tenure. It doesn't really happen anymore it was, now. It was good. It was good cheap lessons. Yeah, exactly. That's what every time we lose money, Elon and I say, "Oh, that was a good, good cheap lesson." Uh, could have been a lot worse. So, um, yeah, you know, really, I think what we're proud of the most is this this community that's kind of self sourcing itself today. Um, and again, for a lot of you guys who are doing the intentional, transformational, evolutionary, healing, energetic, you know, call it whatever you want, the work, this good spiritual work, um, <clears throat> it was something that we have really realized over 20 years of doing developmental work and spiritual development work is that you can't do it on your own. You just can't do it on your own. And so like for us, the, the community, we'll try. yeah, we'll try. <laughs> you really want to, we really you wanted to you do it on your own. You really think you can do it on your own. We get it. <laughs> we get it. Cause we've tried so, so hard on our own to do it. Uh, and the truth be told is you just need other people. We all have these little sparks inside of us, little gifts, uh, templates. And, you know, one of the things that we, we talk about and we'll talk about here, um, uh, more and more is that like you need other people's uh, energetic templates you need other people's nervous systems literally to teach each other and if you don't know what the hell i'm talking about you're like why would we need that yeah we live we live very much in the world of the mind and that's why we're going to talk about growing up and waking up work today as the kind of the the cornerstone of what we want to teach we'll do a little meditation today with you all that seems to be um a nice little bolt on recently um and so what you really want to get is that you know, again, our nervous systems haven't changed from the way they were when you were a little boy and little girl. And there are signals that human beings are sending between each other, just like two computers have input, output, you know, read in, read out type signals. You know, of course, we would replicate that which we are. Uh, there's these little, you know, signals that if you tune into and you kind of intuitively know, like, okay, this person's got that signal, this person's got that signal. So what happens when you get a community of people around who are, are consciously uh, working their this spiritual aspect of themselves, getting in greater and greater alignment with themselves, liberating energy in their bodies, becoming more fluid with their emotions, uh, becoming healthier in mind, body, and spirit, and you bring those people together to sit intentionally with one another. And so like these little nuance, very subtle things that happen in our energetic uh, and subtle bodies, uh, it is critical as far as we can tell that we sit with other people and get this the confluence of these signals in a healthy way. And for many of us, you know, again, you guys can say I in the chat box if you're one of them who are dealing with situations in life that just seem to be on repetition, whether it's unhealthy relationships, an unhealthy body, unhealthy mind, um, you know, problems in business you want to start considering that the common denominator here it's like you could say it's you but it's really this output signal that's coming from your body and it's not like there's anything wrong with it it's just the way that your body has learned to try to defend itself and create safety in this world and so when it's like that we end up living in a very narrow band of experiential reality we think reality is a certain way that we are a certain way people are a certain way and, and the truth is behind that, uh, there is no one way that reality or human beings really are, but we can't see beyond the narrow band of, of how we've conditioned our body or how our, our bodies and minds and everything was conditioned for us. And so, you know, this Satori Prime thing is an exploration. We use the word reprogramming, but like, I see that that doesn't resonate for a lot of people. I want to just, you know, we use reprogramming because that's the lexicon of the moment. We have computers, we program them, you uninstall, you reinstall, you reprogram, right? But like you could just say, it's, it's a reconditioning, really. Every human being goes through a developmental process and there's a conditioning aspect that comes along with that from your families, religions, so societies, countries, nation states, you know, big, big, in, big bodies of influences on, on people all over the world all the time. And so there's a, uh, a conditioning that you didn't, you didn't ask for, it just happened. And you gotta get that really what's, what's, what's important for all of us is that your, the quality of your life is, is really predicated on the conditioning, or con not conditioned, but the conditioning of your subconscious systems. 
This is your sympathetic and parasympathetic systems. This is your energetic body. It's actually what you're not thinking. It's just what you, what is just emanating from you. But the reason we always want to work on mindset and then the energetic body is that the mindset piece, this mind that you actually have access to is kind of like the bouncer at the club. If it agrees with something, it lets it in. If it disagrees with something, it defends it off. And so when you were a little boy and little girl, you didn't have, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? You didn't have a way to navigate the world. You took everything at face value. You didn't have your own inner alignment to say, hey, does that feel good for me or doesn't feel good for me? Things were done to you that didn't feel good, but you didn't realize they didn't feel good until much, much later in your life. And so this part of you is just letting down information. And as long as this agrees, it will let that information down to your subconscious. And, and those conditionings are, are really what we're, is hampering and what we're all dealing with because most of that, the foundation of that, got conditioned before you had a thought, before you had language, you know, before any of those things, before you had any decision making at all in your life, any choices that you made. And so for a lot of us, that's why we end up in like therapy or talk therapy or mindset type stuff. And it helps with kind of navigating what this is doing. But then there's this like deeper uh, experience, subtle energetic experience that's happening underneath all that consciousness. And that's what our work is really about. It's okay. Let's, we can handle that. Awesome. You understand how it works, but it's like, how do we get into these deeper, richer tapestries inside of you and, and let your body recondition itself towards its own alignment, towards its own health. And this is not like Elon and I know where that conditioning is, by the way. We don't, we're not healers in that way. Uh, what we offer you here and what these conversations are about is an access to an experience that leverages your own body, soul, innate intelligence to do the work for you. Okay, there's a there's a, a law in the universe, a law of neutrality. Okay, and that and if you kind of look at everything in, in, in nature, when we leave it alone, it goes back to homeostasis. Okay, like if we stop, you know, poisoning our rivers and oceans and stuff like that, you can look at projects all over the world where things are protected and within a single generation, you see a abundance of life coming back like everywhere in the universe you know everywhere we look on our planet it doesn't matter how treacherous or how insane the environment there's life sprouting there okay and we've had to kind of redefine what consciousness and life means for all of us and so if we if we kind of leave it alone earth heals here's the weird part if you kind of leave yourself alone you heal so there's a lot of interjection that's happening to human beings about what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to do it, what they're supposed to be, what they're not supposed to be. This is very confusing. And our intelligent, divine, intelligent body doesn't know what to do with that information. So it just kind of steps out of the way and lets the conscious mind run the ship. And if you kind of look at the way the structure of the world is right now, this is a world built by the mind. It's not a world built by divine intelligence. It's not a world built by the heart. Or, or alignment or what people really want to be or what they really want to do. They, they feel forced into situations, right? Into certain jobs, all from like this kind of like need to survive. But that's not our, that's not our natural way. That's not your true nature. And so, you know, these conversations are about this exploration, not about giving you answers, but about opening up an exploration within you to inquire and get curious about your true nature, because what could be more thrilling than touching your true nature and then letting this natural repatterning that happens, this natural reconditioning, just like it happens all over the world when we leave stuff alone. But here's the thing. We got to do this work so we can learn how to leave it alone. Because your mind is not conditioned that way right now. It wants to do stuff. It wants to interject. It wants to fix. And again, it's a beautiful machine that wants to do that and it doesn't work. And for those of you guys who have been doing work for a long time and have been trying to do that, you know what I'm talking about. And you know this feeling of stuckness that you get, even though when you become very wise and intelligent and have gathered all the right information, it's like, oh, uh, no, nope, I still feel that thing. I'm still having trouble in these relationships. I still am sabotaging myself. And like, that's what you want to inquire. Like, why is that? Okay. So we're going to draw this distinction. I'll pass it over to Elon to kind of start drawing this distinction for you today. And again, don't use this as a like, oh my God, this is the answer, but use it as a, as a means to begin to explore, inquire, and get curious because part of being neutral is not in concluding 
anything in your life at all. Okay, I, I will just say this simply. If you conclude, you're losing aliveness in your life, period. You want to know why children are so happy and exploratory? My, my son's over here playing very, quiet, very quietly next to me right now. They're joyful because they're curious. But the moment a parent starts telling them what everything is in this world, it takes the mystique out of this world. And it starts putting that child into a very narrow band of what life is, what it isn't, what they can be, what they can't be. And so adults are nothing more than children who've just concluded a lot of stuff. We want to stop concluding. We want to start bringing back the exploration. And part of that is understanding why, why the mind is so focused on conclusion, concluding, why we've conditioned it this way. And then how do we bring ourselves more back to an open system, an open state that can be with the experiences of life and open up to all sorts of new things. And again, for those of you guys who are clients and students in here, you know, you can sound off like on a scale of one to 10 between where you maybe were a year or two ago in your aliveness to maybe how you feel right now in your aliveness, would you say that there has been a significant increase in your vibrancy and your vivaciousness and your experience of just becoming alive, okay? And so this is kind of what I want to just uh, put in the background for everyone to just start contemplating. Again, not about, you don't come here for answers, come here to open up exploration. So just out of curiosity, um, for those that are here, if you just in the comment box, just write roughly how many years you've been on the path, like, on the journey of, of seeking and learning and just also share in there, you know, what, what you've done. Is it seminars, books, videos, hired a coach, just so we kind of get a sense of who's here. And then you'll also get a sense of who's in this community. And, um, just so you know, a little bit about Guy and I, he, he mentioned before, but Guy and I started our personal growth journey, uh, about 20 years ago, roughly. And we started with a seminar, like a, like a weekend seminar. And that was kind of the, the thing that opened us up to this whole world. Uh, before that, we had no idea about personal development, mindset, spirituality. And I would say even though we did seminars, I don't think I realized that what I was learning was spiritual till probably six or seven years into it. For me, it was just mindset, understanding how the brain works, understanding how I do things, why I do things, when those patterns and things got created, how they show up, you know, how to alter certain ones to get over some other ones. And um, when you do mindset work, the thing to realize, and it, again, it took us 15 years to, to get to this place, what I'm sharing with you now. So hopefully for you guys, it's, it's easier, but, um, and I'm just kind of reading uh, what you guys are writing here. So we have, let me just do that real quick. So Kareem says 12 years, books, counseling, different types. Lacey says six years, books, seminars, videos, meditation. Uh, I don't know who that is, but said 49 years since birth, counseling, talking with loved ones, journaling, and the love to receive or replace. So I can watch again after work tonight. No problem. Um, many books, seminars. Qigong, less than a year, 30, five to nine, over 20 therapy. So, right, like you can kind of see everyone in all these different different places. And what took us 15 years to figure out, and maybe some of you have, and maybe some of you have not, is twofold. One is that everything we were doing was mindset-based. And the thing that was doing the mindset work was the mind. I'm going to say that again. The thing that was doing the work was the mind. So let that sink in there for a second, because if I were to ask you, what is the mind's goal for you in life? What is the mind most focused on for you in your life? What would you guys say? <laughs> mind was on the mind. I love that. Yeah, it really was. So what is the mind most interested in? for you in life. And while you're pondering that, I'm going to let you know that. Yeah. So Alex says it survival, right? That's the only thing the mind's interested in it. The mind does not care about your happiness. The mind doesn't care about your fulfillment. The mind doesn't care about how much peace you have in life. The mind doesn't care about how much love you have in life. 
literally could not care a lick. It wants to keep you alive. That is it. So now this should bring you to the next piece of inquiry, which is if the mind is the one doing the mindset work and the mind's only thing that it is focused on is having you survive, then does it actually care about you healing anything? Does it actually care about you finding love? Does it actually care about you finding a career that's fulfilling? Does it actually care about you being super healthy and vital? No, it doesn't care about any of that stuff. And how many of you guys have noticed that when you did mindset work, you would have these like aha moments and you'd be like, oh my God, I figured out why I do that thing that I always do and da, 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 da. And then three days later, you're right back to doing that same exact thing. Or a week later, you feel that same exact disappointment or that same exact anger or that same exact frustration or that same, whatever it is, right? And life starts to become very cyclical. And every time that you find this aha moment or you find this new book or this new teacher or this new YouTube video that you share with everyone and you're like, oh my God, you won't believe what I learned. A week later, a month later, you're still doing the same thing. And when you're doing that same thing, you get what? You get really disappointed. And what does the mind have you go do? It has you go and search for the next answer. Because that answer that you just got before clearly was not the right answer. Because here I am doing the same thing, feeling the same way, struggling with the same circumstance. So obviously, yeah, so someone said, read another book, right? Read another book, go to another video, find another teacher because that teacher didn't have it right. I thought they did because, you know, I really did feel like I was getting somewhere. And then all of a sudden, here I am again. But check this out. If the mind is the one doing mindset work and the mind is only interested in survival and the mind has already figured out that you can survive these circumstances, then why would it ever want to leave the loop as annoying to you as it might be? Why would it ever want to leave that loop? It knows how to survive it. And here's the tricky part of the mind. As long as it keep, keeps giving you these like, it's like a, it's like when you give a dog a treat, right? Like it gives you just enough where you're like, Ooh, that's exciting. That's new. And then you're like, Oh no, that didn't work. And the mind's like, Oh, let's go get another treat. Oh, there it's, it's definitely in that book. Oh, it's, it's definitely over there. It's definitely over here. And you just run. Let me go get that treat. Let me go get that treat. But nothing actually changes. Because the growing up work, as fundamentally important as it is, it is, you can't do the waking up work, which we're going to talk about here in a second. You can't do that work until you've done this foundational growing up work. It's like, you need to understand how this is made. You need to understand how this is made. You need to understand what it says to you, why it says it to you, how it says it to you, how it pushes this sequence of buttons and you jump in this direction to go grab that book or go do that thing, right? You need to understand that. And I would say that for us, what was important was to even come to the edges of what the capabilities of that work was. Because my life definitely expanded as I kept doing more of that mindset work. But I just kept bumping up against certain levels of fear, certain levels of disappointment, certain levels of sad. And the mind has zero interest in your emotional body. It has no connection to it. Again, purely for survival. So it's like, okay, more information. Give me more information, more information. Because what if the mind will convince you that if I have more information, I will figure us, I will figure out a way how to get us out of this loop. But it doesn't want to get you out of the loop. So how many of you guys in the comment box, as I'm sharing this, you can really start to resonate and go like, oh my God, this is kind of exactly where I'm at. Like I'm really starting to notice that as good as mindset work is, and as good as this growing up work is, I'm starting to feel 
the edges of the capabilities of that technology. It's like if I gave you the original iPhone today and was like, hey, you, you now need to use this. You would throw that thing against the wall in about 10 minutes because you would literally push one button and it would take like 30 seconds for that one button push to do anything and like nothing would work in, in sync, right? We're used to newer tech that works faster. So the waking up work, the way I explained like an analogy in a very, very simple term is growing up work is like going to a doctor and you say, hey, doctor, there's a pain in my foot. And the doctor treats your foot and goes, here's pain meds, put it on ice, rest it, and you'll be fine. And sure enough, you will have treated the symptom. But what if the symptom in your leg keeps coming back? Is it really then the thing in your toe or your leg that's creating the pain? No. There's probably something else. Maybe it comes from your back or your stomach or your hip or who, who knows what. And so while growing up work deals with the symptom, it deals with the like, oh, I erupted into anger. So now I'm managing the anger. Waking up work starts to bring the body and the nervous system into the equation. The thing that the mind has A, no interest in, and B, no connection to. The only way to find your energetic body, the only way to start dealing with your nervous system is to actually bring what we call the awareness effect. You start to use awareness. Awareness, for most people, the reason you do mindset work is because awareness is trapped in the mind. And awareness can be anywhere. So I'm not going to get into exactly how to. We'll, we'll do that a little bit later. But what I want to offer is that the waking up work allows you to start to feel your environment and begin to explore your world through the felt sense. And this is where you can begin to heal, not the symptom, but the actual root cause of what creates the patterns that you have all mapped out. If I was like, hey, uh, why do you get so angry in your life? You're going to tell me the whole story. Well, when I was three, this and this and this happened. And because of this and this and this happened, I had to become da 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 da. And because of that, this and this and this is showed up. You can all map it out for me left and right, there and center, right? Like you can tell me all of how it got created, who was there, when it created, why it got created, all of it. Doesn't really make a difference, does it? Knowing all of that, forwards, backwards, this way, that way, you've seen it from a million different perspectives. It doesn't really change the fact that you still have those responses. Because again, you didn't look at the root cause of why anger arises, why sadness arises. What is the part internally that triggers this effect in your body? So when we started looking at waking up work, it was a revelation Imagine being in a circumstance that you have right now in your life that is causing overwhelm, anxiety, upset, whatever it might be, right? You know that every time you're going into an interaction with this person or this circumstance, there's going to be a blood boil. There's going to be a sadness. There's going to be a disappointment. There's going to be all that stuff. Imagine going to the same and you tried, you've read books and you're like, okay, I'm going to tell them this thing. Okay, if I'm just going to ask this question. Okay, I'm just going to notice that I have this thought pattern that makes them this villain and I don't want them to be a villain, so I'm not going to be the victim. You've done all these things and yet here you are still having that. So now you walk into that same scenario and there's literally, literally no reaction. The only thing that you actually stop to look at is this pause as you look up to your mind and you go, wait, no, like nothing, no reaction, nothing. And there will be nothing, nothing. 
And that's when you know you'll have actually healed the root cause instead of getting more information through the mind of trying to understand why, what, when, and how. If you talk to any of our clients, one of the biggest shifts that they make is they leave the world of understanding and shift into a world of experiencing. Direct experiencing. Mm -hmm. Direct. And, and not through what Guy or Elon says is their experience, but they open their own systems to have a felt sense of their own experience. And that own experience guides them. And in fact, for most people who have done a lot of mindset work, giving up the part of having to understand every step of the way can be challenging. But what I can tell you from personal experience and having coached tens of thousands of people through this, the necessity to understand everything and how it is and why it is, is the biggest handbrake in your life. It's like your foot's on the gas, but the handbrake is pulled all the way up, right? Like the parking brake, handbrake, whatever you want to call it. And you're like, why am I not moving? Is because you're stuck in a world of trying to understand. Yeah. And I just want to say this because I've, we've seen this pattern come up this week a bit for a few people. Um, you know, people come into the work, obviously, for lots of different reasons, right? Some people just want to make more money. Some people just want to stop feeling scared. Some people's relationships are falling apart. Some people's health is out of control, right? Like, we all want to, again, a more holistic human experience, I think. There's this, there's this tendency, though, when we start doing work that it's like, hey, I'm here to alleviate all my stress. So if I experience stress while I'm in this work, the work must not be working. But here's the thing. Whatever happened to you, whatever trauma lives in your system, the way it went in is the way it comes out. What creates the healing is the view, not the perspective, by the way, literally the view you have energetically through awareness. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Elon briefly mentioned local and non-local awareness. So we're not talking about paradigm perspective here. The paradigm perspective model, that's all the mindset stuff. Okay, like that, it's very helpful, right, to see things differently, obviously, like we all know that. But most of us are very stubborn. Our system is stubborn. It's stuck in a view. And it's like, well, can't get out of that. And that's why we need to start leveraging local and non-local awareness and, and really understanding how does this ancient technology of meditation allow for us to locate a mind that is the mind, not the little mind, but like the mind, the mind of all consciousness and awareness. And so what I want to tell you is part of what we have to go through, part of what the work is about, and we're actually training our team right now to have these conversations when we onboard clients is that like, you're not here not to get triggered. In fact, the design of this work is triggering. Because when you go look at these parts from your childhood that are stuck in time, quote unquote trauma, that's gonna be triggering. What's gonna be different here is you're gonna develop a way to view from a, a higher state of consciousness and awareness that experience and actually let the experience move through you, okay? Said another way is let that energy in your body metabolize. Because usually for people when they experience trauma, the, the energy is not metabolizing. It's staying in their system and getting stuck in their system. And that's why the mind has to respond so viscerally. Because it's that stuckness of energy in their body that, that the mind is responding to. Whoops, we heard. Okay, baby, I gotta talk. I'm sorry right now. Give me a second, okay? <clears throat> so... So what we want to really start working on is not, hey, let me let me get rid of all my triggers. Everything needs to stop. I need to stop having these experiences. In time, you will, as you practice, how do I actually go through this experience? What's the view that I need to develop? For those of you guys who have read Michael Singer's book, Untethered Soul, he calls it the seat of awareness. Yeah, and Laura over here is talking about how she's done Qigong and powerful action. Why? Because Qigong helps move and metabolize energy, right? That's the, it's a, it's a physical, uh, practice. And for those people who really practice Qigong, Elon and I have for, for a few years now as well, when you go into higher states of consciousness while in Qigong, you start seeing some really magical things happen in that, in that process as well. And so, you know, Elon pointed at it, but I'll kind of, uh, marinate here a little bit more for you guys on it. Most of us are trying to do work from our conditioned minds. Baby, are you trying to get out? Okay, bro, bro can get, just take over for one hey. quick second. Yeah, I was just reading, uh, Laura. I I very much agree. Qigong has been a a wonderful uh, 
piece that really helped me get into my body. And Qigong is one of those things that, um, again, it's so interesting. The mind really, really wants to understand why am I waving my hands this way? I don't feel anything. Is this weird? Is this how it's supposed to be, et cetera? And then when you start to give that up, you really start to become in the presence of the energy. Like awareness can actually start to feel the energetic system opening up and moving. So yeah, I, I definitely agree. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so we want to start realizing that when we're when most of us are doing work, we're doing it here. Like we, we really are in this headspace right here. This is where all your conditioning is. Okay. This is, this is the view that you're taking. And it's like, you're trying to see your conditioning from your conditioning. Okay. And this is why oftentimes therapy and things like that don't work. We actually, cause this is emerging. Like the part of you that's traumatized is what you're merged into. So you're like hijacked by this part. You're in the experience. And so like nothing can happen other than really you experiencing the trauma again as if it's happening again. And so there's, there's a sense of like uh, re-traumatization that, that can happen in this state. The way that we can alleviate that and the way that we can really start working with the intelligence of our body is learning how to locate our non-local awareness that lives outside of this awareness. Okay, and we'll do a little taster of that today. But I wanted, I wanted to let you guys know if you like... This is not something you can teach somebody in five minutes, but it actually doesn't take quite as long to teach as you might think. This is, there's a mistake that you need to be like in the Himalayas and some cave for 40 years contemplating a question to find this, this, you know, in Buddhism, they call it the spaciousness, the emptiness, right? It, it's actually very, very natural for us to go there. We just need someone to point to us in that direction. It's like, you know, if you were like uh, wanting to do a workout or to, uh, you know, walk to a certain place, like you need to know the right path to get there, right? And so these maps have been with us for a very, very long time, except it's kind of been lost on most of humanity how to get there. So one of the things that we do at our, at our two-day live event, which is coming up here in just a few days, um, this Friday and Saturday, is we actually train you guys how to locate this aspect of you, right? Like how to actually locate this greater awareness, this higher state of consciousness, if you want to think of it that way. And then once you're there, how do we leverage that to leverage our own intelligent design and divine healing that happens within our bodies naturally? Okay, so where, hum where humanity is stuck for the most part is that it's like you you, you either like your experience you're, and, and think about it. It's not really what's happening outside of you that matters. This is something we really need to start understanding. It's not your circumstances. You think it is because that's you've been conditioned to look outside for God for fixes, for problem fixes, to, to survive. It's like something needs to change out here. This is why nothing changes for people. I'll say it again, because we've been conditioned to externally focus. This is why nothing changes for people. If you turn the view back in, you'll realize that everything you pay money for, all your pleasant experiences, everything that you enjoy in life has less to do with what's got happening outside and really more about how you feel internally about that thing. So it is, it's, it's, strange for us to think that we're ever going to get to a completely peaceful environment like life is still going to be life there is a, a gift in the challenges that we all experience it, it it has to resonate in our system we need to have some kind of feedback from our environment in order to know how to evolve internally and so the things that you like and the things that you don't like are really your internal experiences you know one of the best questions you can ask anybody when you're coaching them is is that experience positive negative or neutral for you if it's anything but neutral, to some degree, you're going to suffer or eventually suffer about that. Because even the things that you really like, they are going to fade away. And then there's going to be the suffering of trying to either, either try to get back to that or living in your mind as you recount those experiences and, and try to recreate that in your life. Or you have, you're having an unpleasant experience and you're trying to avoid it and get away from it. And in either case, you know, that's, that's what Buddhism talks about, right? It's about this, this suffering that humans are going through. And so the, mechan the mechanism that allows for a human being to heal is a neutral point. Okay? It, it's, a, it's our ability to be neutral. Now, we can't be neutral when we're in our conditioned mind. We can only get hijacked from there. And so the reason a lot of mindset work doesn't really take people where they want to go is because they're still doing it from that conditioning of the mind. 
and when we come to when we come to higher states of consciousness, the seat of awareness that Michael Singer has dubbed, what he's really saying is you become the subjective viewer of the object. You basically become this, you know, you become the awareness that's watching an object have an experience. And when that happens, your ability to be with the circumstances in your life grows exponentially. Again, you know, every you know, people here who are part of our clients and stuff like that, like tell me that's not true. You know, pro prove me wrong on that one, that you suddenly don't have a capacity to be with things that you would have never had to be with before. And that doesn't mean that they don't get sad or angry or any of those things, but their willingness and ability to be with those experiences that may be comfortable or uncomfortable in their, in their system massively expands. And so this is why we can predictably say you go from a very narrow band of reality to suddenly this very expansive band of reality suddenly you could just be with more period and that's ever evolving like of course there's going to be edges to that of course there's going to be places where it's like that's not comfortable right like maybe you were okay with you know like maybe you're really afraid of snakes and suddenly it's like you're not afraid of all snakes so you can be with a small snake but then like you see a python and you're going to be like well that doesn't make me so very comfortable and you can you can learn right you can build up to these things and so i say all this because some people come into programs and they go well i'm, I'm being triggered right now this must not be working it's like no that's the nature of the work it's not about not being triggered it's not about not dealing with difficulties it's not about not having discomfort in your life anymore it's who are you being when that's arising are you somebody who can now sit with people and get support are you now somebody who can literally go into your system and be like, okay, I don't, you know, there's discomfort here, but I'm going to let it move through my system. And it's that moving through that enables for us to heal. And eventually, as you continue to do repetitions with this, you get to a place like what Elon described, which is, holy shit, I can't believe I'm not responding harshly right now. I'm not overreacting. I'm not doing these negative sabotaging patterns in anymore in my life. And a new version of you arises in that space. You start doing things you've never done before. You start saying things you've never done before. And you really are out there just being a new being. It's, see, we're, again, we're very dynamic. We're ever evolving. We just need to give ourselves an opportunity to do that. And there's been a lot of false information and conditioning brought upon humanity that once you're a certain way, that's how you are forever. And psychology can't seem to figure it out because that's not the mechanism. That's not the, the ideal mechanism for healing a human being. It's an ideal mechanism for understanding a human being. It's an ideal mechanism for learning about responsibility and integrity and, and uh, communication that works better for, for ourselves and for other people and not, you know, manifesting, creating negative things in your life. It's great for all of that. But the undertone, it's not gonna, it's not gonna heal that. So bro, do you wanna just, anything else you wanna add or do you wanna jump into a quick experience here? I think let's jump into the experience and then we'll see yeah. how to write. So we want to give you guys a little taster, right? Like that's what it's about. Like you may not know what we're talking about at all. We are we are talking about something that doesn't have language. Okay, it's like yeah, we we describe love, we talk about spirit and God and things like that. But it's like these are these are indescribable things. Now here's the difference: something that can't be described through language, because language is just inadequate to describe the the depth of the human experience. Nonetheless. We can experience that experience. We can feel that, that experience very profoundly. And that's what this work is about. It's about transmitting those experiences to people and then pointing at it, pointing at it, pointing at it and say, do you notice? Have you noticed? Did you notice? Again, just like you do with a child. They're in an experience. The caregiver's job is to say, did you notice? Did you notice? Did you notice? And, and the, the child maps their experience of life to themselves, right? But many of us, are not leaving an open-ended world for our children. We're telling them what it is. We're telling them what they have to be. They're telling them what's the right way and the wrong way to be a human being. And it's like, well, this soul came here maybe for not to be that path. Maybe they don't need to think or act or feel like you. Maybe what we're here is interested in why did the soul come here in the first place? And they have a unique self-expression that's trying to come through. And that, and again, feel into your own system, the depth of that. We all came here for a unique experience we all came here to express that which we are do you believe that we've built a world and an, uh, an environment that illuminates that that allows for that and maybe the job of this generation is to do that inner work within themselves to start illuminating these aspects of ourselves so that for the next generation as they come in certainly it's a work we do with my son every day we just 
you know, he was upset. We just sat here and we we sat in silent meditation with a three year old for 30 minutes, if you can believe that. I, even I was like, wow, holy shit. You know, and he's like, I'm sad, I'm sad. I'm like, I get it, baby, you're sad. Like, I don't want him to not be sad. I want him to learn how to navigate sadness. Correct. Do you guys get that? Many of us did not get that opportunity. We were sad and they said, stop being sad. Pick your shit up. Stop being a pussy. You know, sorry for the language here. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Pull up your pants. Boys don't cry. Like, you know, this is the feedback you got. And so you went from being a very sensitive being to somebody who had to defend themselves to survive in the world that we've generated. If you want to see the world transform, guess what? We got, we got to shift our inner experience. Otherwise, we are just survival coming out over and over again and then unleashing that on other people and, and telling them they have to be a certain way because we're not feeling safe. So it might be prudent for all of us to start recognizing that the number one thing that a human wants is safety. And again, I'm not talking about, you know, external safety, certainly right in our environment, but like, I want to feel safe in my body. I want to feel safe here. I want to just feel safe in my system. The second thing you probably want is you want connection. You want true authentic connection. We are starving for it. And it's not that we don't want to give it to each other. We actually don't know how because we don't feel safe. And then I would say lastly, or, you know, farther down that list is like, and, and, and expressing that which we are. So if you are for playing any of those games, again, I just want to tell you, that's what this organization is about. That's what this community is about. That's what our programs are about. Uh, in whatever facet you need to, if you're interested and curious, you're ready to invest in yourself because trust me, this is like any other education. You need to, you need time in it to fully appreciate it. Just let us know. Just say in the comment box, I'm interested. And someone from the team will reach out to you, set up a conversation with you and, you know, uh, give you a little taste. So, so check it out. So get comfy. Take a few deep breaths. We'll do this for, you know, about five minutes here and then we'll begin to close out. And we're going to, we're going to work a little bit more in the waking up space. I mean, many of you guys have the growing up stuff unlocked. Some of you guys don't at all. And again, we have programs for all this. Doesn't matter where you are. You want to work on your mindset. Great. You want to do healing work. Great. We want to marry both of them for you so that you can get absolutely the most value in your life. So close your eyes. And just locate your awareness for a moment here. Where are you? Where are you viewing the world from? Where are you experiencing the world from? And chances are you are noticing or experiencing the world what seems like from behind your eyes. Almost like you're watching a movie there's an internal movie screen and it's being projected at this awareness. And I want you to notice that you're, for most people, their awareness sits within the landscape of their head between the left and the right ear. And if you can notice right now that there's a quality to that experience, those qualities usually are like tension, density, Stuckness. These are words we would use for a prison. You know, the movie The Matrix is all about the prison of the mind, freeing the mind, right? So it's truly what they're pointing out in that movie is that you are stuck in a conditioning. This is a matrix, a self-created prison. And there's a quality to that experience. So now somehow, some way, without even waiting for me, because I'm not going to give you instructions on how to do it, I want you to notice that you just can do this. I want you to start finding the space around your head. And if you don't quite know what that means, that's okay. A little pointer here is just find the space in front of your face, like a few inches away, and then find the space to the right head side of your head and then behind your head, and then to the 
left side of your head, just find some space and find your awareness there. And then naturally just letting it expand out as little or as much as it wants to. For some of you guys, you might be able to find a few inches. For some of you guys, you will end up in a different galaxy. There's different people have different access. There's nothing wrong with your access. And it doesn't really matter how far you go. And you might even be toggling, like you find yourself kind of behind your eyes again, and then outside of the space, around your head, all that is perfectly normal and natural and fine. Just let the toggle happen. Don't try to manage the toggle. Again, we are learning to be with our experience as it's arising. So if there's toggling, there's toggling. If your mind is talking, it's talking. If there's an emotion arises, it arises. We're not trying to manage. We're not trying to cope. We're actually trying to notice what is our actual experience right now. And you can go, grow in depth in how much you can perceive here in massive ways. And I want you to just notice, if you haven't already, just like that, for those of you who are finding the space, you are toggling or moving now from a conditioned mind to a greater mind. We call this non-local awareness, spaciousness, the emptiness. And you may notice that there's a different quality to your experience now. It might feel like buoyancy or more restful, less, you know, less density. Some people call this the void. Oftentimes our, you know, the edges of our body feel like they're disappearing when we go here, or there's like a, um, almost like a disassoci disassociative quality here. And you are, you are disassociating from your identity. That's actually what's happening. Your identity is part of that conditioning. Your persona, personality is all part of that conditioning. It is not who you are. It is a mechanism that is used for survival and 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 physical space and third density reality. So just for another minute, just kind of enjoy and explore the spaciousness. Yeah, just noticing the quality here and we'll do one more shift back and forth real quick so find yourself again back in your mind just like let your awareness collect back in in the location behind the eyes there and as you do that notice the subtle change in the qualities that occur here and for me it's like i actually feel the discomfort of coming back in towards my conditioning I can actually start feeling contraction in my center channel and in my heart. There's a density and a squeezing in my temples and a, right around my third eye area there. Like it, there's actually like, uh, ugh, like it, like it's yucky. This is a, like, a, you know, like dirty is maybe a strong word here because a lot of people associate like dirt with sin. I don't mean that kind. It's just like, it's like walking into a dirty room. Like, ugh. Okay, and then somehow, some way, again, find yourself in the spaciousness around your head. And again, we want to notice the subtle qualitative shift here, because it's all about that noticing. I'm just pointing. I'm pointing for you what your own natural intelligence can do. There you go. Yeah, and Chantel saying, so just hearing this for the first time, I do this almost all the time and I've been able to do it my whole life. Here's the reality. You've all been able to do this your whole life. This is nothing can be more innate than what you're what you may be exploring right now. This is not something you need to learn how to do. It's something you get to remember how to start doing it again. And the more you do it, you can actually start living outside of this conditioning that the mind that we have created in the mind and outside of the conditioning that this world has created 
outside of the fear and the systems that are used to continue to condition and control, you know, whether you believe in those systems or not, there's an experience of being part of those systems. So again, just kind of for a moment here, again, noticing the quality, all about the quality, not the how, not the why, not how do I, you know, how, why we use this, how we use this. This is what we explore in our programs. This is the beginning of getting a taste of literally coming outside of your mind into higher states of consciousness so that we can let this natural reconditioning happen. Okay. So just blink your eyes open when you're ready. If you guys want to share in the chat box any insights, any you know, kind of cultivations that you had harvesting that you want to get from that experience. And again, this is just like a teeny tiny little taste. There's so many pointers we can give you guys about how to work with your system. And I love that, by the way, what you said, Chantel. It's like, I've been doing this my whole life. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. This is available to absolutely everybody. Hey, Michal. Nice to see you here. <clears throat> Yeah, so Michal, we'll have somebody from the team reach out to you, okay? And have a conversation with you about these programs. And that's it, guys. You know, like, again, this is hopefully, you know, these these conversations are about a perspective shift and really what's available to you in understanding that it's not about us changing the circumstances in our lives necessarily, although that will happen as a natural byproduct of this work. You don't have to focus on it. There's so much work that's like, I got to change my intentions. I got to manifest what I want and blah, 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 blah. But they miss the most key pivotal thing, which is what you're manifesting is based on the emanation of the frequency, the state of being that you are. So I don't care how much you try to manifest or write in your journal, blah, 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 blah. If that desire to do that is coming from scarcity and that's what's emanating from your body, then whatever it is you're creating is going to create more scarcity. You'll manifest more scarcity. That's what you will manifest. So the most important thing you can learn how to do is to come back in, let your body self-liberate, let the energy shift in your system, and then a new consciousness and a new experience arises as a byproduct of that. It's not even something you have to focus on. It just happens. Okay? So um, let me just drop this here for you guys again. Um, let's see. What do we have here that I can put for you? Yeah. Yeah. So again, Friday is uh, is the event is coming up. Starts on Friday morning and Saturday. It's about four or five hours each day. Let's say five hours per day. Life altering. You know, if you if if this event doesn't knock your socks off, please come get a refund. Like our, our reasoning for doing any of our programs is you should get value from doing these programs. Okay, about ninety seven percent of people who do our programs report it's it's probably the best experience of their life. Um, we pretty much can guarantee that as long as you do the work, you're going to have those kind of experiences too. You know, hands down. It's not, this is not a type of, uh, you know, you sign up with companies and then you see, they show you what you can do and they're like, but these are not common results. One to 3% of people will get these results. We're in the exact opposite boat. 97% of people will get these results because it's, we're not talking about you having to learn something. You're, we're pointing at human nature itself. Okay. And so it's like that true nature naturally drives itself in a, in a certain direction. That direction is transformation and evolution. That's all it is. Okay. Uh, I will tell you this. The event is coming up on Friday. When you enroll and get a ticket, um, you have six hours of pre-training that we highly recommend you go through. We, 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 we would offer it's a requirement, but since it's so close, like at this point it's highly recommended. So you want to make sure that if you do want to come on Friday, you want to go through that training before you come on Friday, because it will open up um, the training that we do on Friday and Saturday even more for you. And so you feeling like you're playing kind of catch up with it. And that's why we do that fundamental training um, in that environment. So that by, by the time you come to the event, you can just like rip it. Um, so if you do want that training, let it like if you are interested specifically in the event type comment event uh, and we'll just send you the link. You can check out the information and just go buy yourself a ticket. If you want to have a more exploratory conversation about our programs, what we do here as an organization, what it might look like for you and like the longer term to work with us, uh, that would be where you want to set up a call. But of course, if you, you know, I, I'm basically just telling you, you're like, you don't have a lot of time before the event. So you may not be able to get on a call soon enough to get information about the event 
from our team, but you can certainly try. Again, just let us know if you want to have a conversation by saying I'm interested, or you can book a call for yourself by going to callsatori.com. Okay? Guys, thank you as always for uh, your attention, uh, your inquiries, your comments. We love it. We love, yeah. Anybody from anybody who's done our work already is just gonna tell you just go get a ticket. Trust and faith that you're here for a reason. That you're here right now listening to this conversation. Uh, Corey's here. He's one of our team members who just popped a chat in there. Um, yeah, and we really want to honor you guys and appreciate you. Uh, we know there's a million places in the world you can be right now. Uh, honor the fact that you're here for whatever reason you ended up here. We don't think that that's a coincidence. Um, so thank you again for your awareness. We know it's the most uh, precious gift you can give somebody. We really appreciate that. We love you very much. Have a beautiful week. We hope to see a lot of you guys at our upcoming event. And uh, it's going to be an awesome event. Get there. Bye, Bye. everybody.